With more and more automakers jumping on the electric vehicle bandwagon, there's a great amount of activity in the battery industry. From novel cell chemistries like the glass electrolytic solid state batteries being worked on by Professors Goodenough and Braga, through to Tesla's eagerly awaited one million mile battery, nearly every automaker you can think of is, either publicly or privately, investing heavily in battery research and development. And back at the start of March, just before the majority of the US went into coronavirus-induced lockdown, General Motors held a special battery day in Michigan, where it unveiled its new Ultium battery technology. It's going to be using this for all of its future next-generation electric vehicles. Sadly, we weren't able to make that event, but during a refresher press call today set to coincide with the start of groundwork preparation at the Lordstown, Ohio facility, where GM and LG Chem will make up to 30 gigawatt hours of Ultium battery cells per year for its upcoming electric vehicles, we got to learn a whole lot more. Presenting the refresher was Tim Grew, GM's Director of Battery Cell Engineering and Electrification Strategy. And while we'd previously seen the modular nature of the new Ultium battery design and been told how the overall Ultium architecture was designed to accommodate pack sizes from 50 kilowatt hours all the way up to 200 kilowatt hours, it wasn't until today that we realized just how flexible GM's new system could be. In fact, it's unlike any battery system we've seen in use in volume production vehicles before, encompassing wireless integrated battery management, something GM prefers to call energy management. Its battery packs include structural components that form an integral part of the chassis of the vehicle they're in, which reduces overall vehicle weight over previous battery pack designs. And then there's a battery system that uses a single core battery module design that is shared across all vehicles within the GM family. Oh, and a flexibility of design that means if battery cells fail, replacement modules can be inserted made of whatever cell technology is currently being produced at the time. Together, all of this is set to make some pretty big waves if it delivers on the promises GM is making. And right now, based on the conversations I've just listened to, as well as some questions answered that both myself and colleagues in the automotive press posed, I have little reason to doubt these promises. So let's start with the facility itself. Located in Lordstown, Ohio, adjacent to where Lordstown Motors is building its upcoming endurance pickup truck, the new battery facility is a joint partnership between GM and LG Chem, its longtime battery supplier of choice. Set to produce battery cells in the near future as Ultium LLC, the joint venture will provide GM with up to 30 gigawatt hours of lithium ion cells every year, with GM hoping the facility will be online and producing cells by the time the GMC Hummer EV, Cadillac Lyric and Cruise Origin all start rolling off the production line. Before I get too much into production, I should probably note here that Ultium is, as confirmed in the call, the brand name GM has decided to give the battery system for all of its future EVs. This covers everything from the individual cells through to the way in which the battery packs are put together and integrate with the various models expected to use them. Like so many other production facilities, the Ultium LLC facility, the size of about 30 American football fields, is expected to be built in double quick time and fitted out with the latest in battery cell manufacturing equipment. On the phone call today, Tim Crew noted that GM has tried as much as possible to keep the production line as simple and as streamlined as possible. One way in which this will be achieved is by using what he claims is one of the largest coating processes in the automotive industry. As this footage from Nissan's Sunderland production facility shows, the coating process happens early on in the manufacturing process and is an essential part in preparing the anode and cathode material for use in a battery cell. Gru said on today's call that the machines being installed at Ultium's factory will be capable of coating more than 100 kilowatt hours worth of electrode material per hour, which is yielding one of, if not the widest, coating lines in the industry. The initial cell chemistry chosen for Ultium is, for those interested, an NCMA chemistry or nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminium. Current Chevrolet Bolt EV battery packs use nickel, manganese, cobalt batteries, but GM says the new chemistry means that it's been able to reduce cobalt content in these first generation Ultium batteries 
by 70% thanks primarily to adding the aluminium. Don't think, though, that GM is happy to leave its cobalt content at that point, however. Like other companies, including Tesla, GM is working on multiple generations of battery technology at the same time. There's the battery technology it will debut in its Ultium vehicles. Then there's the battery technology to replace that first generation Ultium chemistry, which is currently undergoing final testing in the laboratory. And then further down the line, more exotic materials for further use in the future. According to GRU, GM is currently working working on next generation technologies in the lab, which include different additives, zero cobalt and zero nickel content. Moreover, he said, quote, we have a million mile battery life in shared usage applications in our sites. We have great results in respect to that. Of course, I could go on about GM's future battery technologies, just like I could for any other automaker. And I could have pushed further to find out more about a new solid lithium metal anode technology, which Gru says GM has been getting very positive results from in the lab and could enable five or 600 mile EVs in the very near future. But what's really important here, certainly for electric vehicle owners and drivers today, is the potential for future compatibility that the Ultium battery system looks to be offering. First, there's the modular battery design, with cells arranged inside modules that each contain their own battery management system, as well as a structural element and a cooling system. Each cell is said to be about 6% larger in capacity than the current Bolt EV cells, which translates to about 100 amp hours per cell. These cells will be the building block of every new Ultium-based vehicle. At the moment, these Ultium battery systems can accommodate either pouch or prismatic cells. GM says its US cars will launch with pouch cells, but production cars will switch to prismatic if new chemistries require it. Interestingly, though, the Ultium vehicles being built in China for the Chinese market will make use of prismatic cells. We weren't told why the difference will exist at launch. Each module can accommodate between 6 and 24 cells, with Altium set to produce a variety of different module sizes to suit various applications, each based around the same basic cell design. That in of itself isn't unusual because lots of automakers use modular battery systems to help arrange individual cells. In fact, every automaker I can think of, including Tesla, Nissan and BMW, do this. But where GM's system differs is its wireless battery management system. How does it work? From what I can gather from the call, each battery module has its own battery management system that can wirelessly communicate with other modules in the pack, as well as wirelessly communicate with the car's main computer system. This not only reduces the need for lots of wires coming out of each module, but it also means it's easier for battery modules to be swapped out if and when the need arises. Uh, a side note here, GM says very few of its cars have actually needed battery replacements and most customers are finding that their car's batteries are outliving the cars. But perhaps the most interesting thing from all of this call came from a question I posed about the ease of battery module replacements when required. Responding to my question, Guru said that he hoped the majority of issues with battery modules could be identified and dealt with through the new Ultium Energy Management System remotely over over-the-air diagnostics. But in the case that a battery module actually needed replacing, it would be possible to drop the pack and remove the offending module, then replace it with a new module. A modular replacement is not that unusual. BMW does it. But here's where it gets interesting. The replaced module, I was told, would not need to be an identical module contemporary to the vehicle's original design, but rather whatever the latest module was from Ultium. Even a new battery chemistry could be accommodated, I was told, since each module deals with its own battery management. It's not 100% clear how this would be accomplished, but it's likely that a new higher capacity module with a new cell chemistry would be simply programmed to behave like the original chemistry while looking after its own battery management. A good example would be perhaps only partially charging to mimic the capacity of the replaced module. But honestly, I don't know enough about the inner workings of Ultium to do more than simply speculate here. But this feature could be revolutionary on its own. Why? Well, as any Nissan Leaf owner will tell you, getting replacement batteries for their first generation Leafs is 
getting difficult. They're getting more and more expensive, partly because Nissan has moved on from the original Leaf battery pack design and chemistry and is making replacement packs in lower numbers, hence the requirement to pay a higher price. If GM has truly cracked a way to allow owners of older cars to drop in a new Ultium pack that can behave like the original with perhaps better life, while simultaneously benefiting from lower production costs due to economies of scale, well, it could put the expensive question of battery replacements to bed forever. Talking of battery costs, several of my colleagues on the call tried and failed to get a figure from Gru about just how much GM is currently paying per kilowatt hour. To this, Gru talked more about total pack costs rather than cell costs. He actually joked he'd get into trouble if he did the latter. While no specific costs were discussed, he claimed that Ultium packs have 50% fewer connections inside the pack and 80% fewer connections inside the cell assemblies compared to the battery pack in the current Chevrolet Bolt. Fewer connections means less materials used during production, which results in a far lighter battery pack, as well as less to go wrong. Additionally, we were told Ultium pack design means that some of the structural elements usually used in the actual vehicle chassis have been transferred to the battery pack itself, which makes the battery pack much more of a structural element, which also reduces overall manufacturing costs for the vehicle chassis and frame. What that actually translates to and actual prices per kilowatt hour though, I'm afraid we weren't given the answer. But what is clear here is that GM's approach to electric vehicles is the same as it's been for its internal combustion engine vehicles. Try to reduce complexity at every turn so that common components are shared across a wide swathe of family of vehicles. These common components can be produced in larger volumes than specific components for each vehicle, meaning economies of scale can dramatically reduce overall costs. The wireless battery management system, future proofing and ability to operate with different cell module chemistries in the same pack. Well, that is some pretty, pretty clever stuff. And in case you're wondering, no, the delayed refresh to the 2020 Bolt EV, now due as a 2021 model year car, won't feature this new battery chemistry, nor will the Bolt EUV, that will appear next year as a sibling to the original Bolt EV. They will, unfortunately, share the Bolt's current battery setup. But future models? Well, I'd have to say they'll all be Ultium based. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon, or you can send us a coffee through Ko-fi. Go on, we really do like our coffee. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Donate $15 a month to us and you will join them on this scrolling wall. If you donate $50 a month, you'll join Jeffrey Songster, John Lyons and Regine Fellows as our self-driving level patrons. They get a tour of the studio when they're in town and some extra special goodies from the road, while top level tier, super out of this world, zooming around the solar system or maybe beyond in a Tesla, Starman patrons Marcel Ward, Reggie Watch, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea get a personal tour of Portland if they're ever in town, complete with some really great food with the team we make sure that we'll take you to some really nice places. If you're looking for something else to see from this channel, then Google thinks you might enjoy this one. So check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. In the meantime, I hope you stay safe. Don't forget to wash your hands. Thanks for putting up with me wearing my glasses today. My eyes did not want to have contacts in. And as always, keep evolving.